What's going on you guys? Today's video is all about a challenge more difficult than I have ever done before. This one tested my limits. I had to use all my abilities and even some of it I was learning by trial and error. But it was a ton of fun and I hope that you enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. First things first, I want to give credit where it is due. I got the inspiration to do this from a channel named AB Creative. I put a link to her in the description so you can check her out after this video. Okay, so I wanted to find an image of a rose that I like and that would fit the canvas that I'm using. I am using an 11 by 14 gallery wrapped canvas for this one. I found one that I loved and I felt like it would work great, so I printed it out and I traced out all the line work. Here, I am using an 8B graphite pencil to transfer the rose to the canvas. The 8B pencil is soft enough material that it can transfer from the paper to the canvas. I just turn over the drawing and scribble over the line, leaving a slight outline on the canvas. When I have a decent outline, it's easy to darken those lines and have a good path to follow for the next part. This outline will work pretty well. Now this part is something that I have no experience with. Hot glue is not something that I have ever used in art before, so there was a lot of growing pains for me with this one. The stream is really difficult to control. It's a very time-consuming process, and my arm did get tired during this part. I would suggest propping your elbow on something when you do it. It's going to make your hands a lot steadier. I had to use both hands to get the line work to a point that I was happy with here. After the lines are done, I was on to the color selection. For this background, I wanted some deep reds mixed with some lighter shades and a small amount of white just to offer a little contrast. This is a color test for darkness and transparency. My mix for this pour was one part paint to one part Floetrol to one part water. My normal mix for most of my pours is two parts Floetrol to one part paint, but I want the consistency of this pour to be very thin so it'll dry flat, flow easier across the canvas, and help create some really nice cells and lines. Now for this pour, this is the consistency that my paints are at. I wanted them a lot thinner, so this is a trace of one for those of you that are trying to match my consistency. I get to work painting the outside edges for this for two reasons. The paint is very thin, so when it travels over the edge it might be so thin that it's transparent, and I don't want any of the white of the canvas to show through. I also know that I'm using various reds for my pour, so I chose this cadmium red deep hue as my base color for to cover the sides. I wanted the rose part to stay white because the micas I'm going to be using later tend to be more transparent when they dry and the dark reds are going to show through. I have this idea to keep the rose protected during the pour and I saw that my press and seal was sitting on the table. I usually cover my leftover paint with this to keep it for later so it doesn't dry out and I had the idea that maybe this would act as like a barrier to stop the paint from getting in and it worked. How is everyone doing today? It's a glorious and warm day in Detroit right now. The sun is shining and it feels like a warm summer day again. I hope you are all doing amazing. Now for the pour. I am layering the colors alternating dark to light with the different hues of color we are using today. I'm allowing the colors to churn through each other to give me a beautiful gradient between the colors. When I do add white, I make sure to only add it in small amounts. I don't want it to take over, and I don't want to make some bright pinks. I want these deep, luscious reds. In each of my color, I have my coconut oil hair serum. It's about one to two drops per three ounce cup of color. I was amazed by this pour. All the colors went very well together and formed some really delicate areas that just flowed. I am grateful you are all here with me sharing this experience. Now if you're enjoying the video so far, do me a favor and like this video because it really helps this channel grow. If you want to see me do more videos like this in the future, feel free to make suggestions down in the comments of what you would like to see next. I would absolutely love to hear from you. While the press and seal worked quite well, there were still some areas where it leaked, so I peel off the remaining plastic and I clean out those areas as best as I can. Here, I choose to frame this rose in shards of clear glass. Like the geode from my last pour, I felt this would add a nice, subtle detail to the composition. I also feel that it helps focus the eye on the rose at the center of the canvas. I also love how the glass interacts with the wet paint below as it keeps shifting. 
It almost looks like the paint flowed right through the glass. So I know that I will be adding resin later, so I choose to varnish it beforehand. I don't want to do it after the resin and then risk messing up the rose in the center, so I opted to do this part first. Plus it will add another layer of adhesive to, for the glass to stay in place, so it really works quite nicely. The varnish I am using is Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. Okay, so now it's time to do all my mica powders. I chose Dark Green from Secura and Raspberry Red from Arteza to use in this rose. When you mix your powders, make sure you're wearing a mask and mix them slowly at first. The powders are very fine and they can get stirred up into the air, causing you to breathe them in, leading to health risks in the future. My process for mixing them in a pour is I put the powder in a cup and then I add the same amount of medium to the cup for the initial mix. I'll mix those slowly until all the grains have fully mixed with your medium. After you've mixed them thoroughly, then you add enough medium until you have the desired amount for your pour. If you try to mix a bunch of powder and medium all at once, oftentimes you end up with a bunch of clumpy bits that never fully mix. For a more detailed look at how I mix my mica powders, I'll put a card at the end of this video for you guys. I am using one of my favorite golds for this part. DecoArt 24 karat gold. It's an amazing color if you get to try it. I paint all the raised areas, making sure to cover all the hot glue areas with it. Finally, the resin coating. I am using stone coat resin for this. Always wear gloves when applying resin and wear a mask because some resins have a very strong fume. I am carefully filling in all the areas of the rose. Now keep in mind, because of the hot glue, some areas are lower than others, so be careful not to overfill those spots, or the resin will spill out onto the canvas and the cleanup is a real pain. I lightly torch it at the end to pop all the bubbles. I'll wait 15 minutes, do it again, and then it's off to the art room to dry. I am absolutely in love with this one. The glass around the outside edge gives just the perfect amount of shimmer and sparkle. And then with the mica powders covered with resin really just makes them pop against that gold. Then the deep, dark, luscious reds that were poured along the background. The way all the colors just interact with each other is amazing to me and I love it. Just the challenge alone of making me step outside my comfort zone made this project well worth it. I look forward to doing more like this in the future because this was just a very challenging yet rewarding piece of art. If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.